Well, who makes it? It's vintage and it's a black and white television and it's got these really sexy legs. Just can't get enough of those. Ooh, the quality. Anyway, for your personal enjoyment, here we have... This is early 1960s. Ooh. Send to that silky smooth. Try that again. <coughs> Try that again. Uh, 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 gotta have that cigarette voice. Listen to that silky smooth operation. Fine German quiet glide engineering. Anyway, if you're into crust, what I have here for you, and I still don't know who makes it. Anyway, this is going to be a, a doomed resurrection, I think. We're going to do an analysis on this vintage black and white 1960s tabletop portable television. Okay, well, it appears that it's a General Electric and it was made in the USA. It's going to need something. <clears throat> Boy, I'm really struggling today. Boy, look at that big black beauty right up there in plain sight. Look at that. This is definitely one for the uh, clean freaks. Anyway, uh, what is this? It's a Telecron timer motor, right? So what did this have a... You could set a timed turnoff with this thing? What kind of gimmick is that? Somebody marked all the tube numbers on this. It's kind of nice as they're all 6 volt tubes and it does have a power transformer 5U4 for added inefficiency and heat generation it's missing the 6DQ6 and the 6AX4 it's also missing this 6CQ 6CG7 that would have to be a 6CG7, 6FQ7. Hold on, before I, before I stick my foot in my mouth. 6CG7. Dual triode horizontal oscillator. Or horizontal multivibrator. It's an M5 chassis. GE always used these really simple chassis numbers. So should we check the uh, picture tube first? Do we think there's anything here? Is this like nicotine crust? Is that what this stuff is? Because it is thick. The sucker is baked. I mean just dig on the thickness of the crust on the back of the tube. Do I dare pull that off? There's always a bunch of mystery on how to read these things, and I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong. But green, gray, orange, so 583, 
and then white, which is nine, so 900 volts. So 0 0.058, I'm probably getting that wrong because I probably, the colors have probably changed over 80 years. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. You kind of read them like resistors, and that's a weird one. Usually they're just like brown, black, orange, 0 0.01, or brown, black, yellow, 0 0.1. But that one's, that one's weird. That's an interesting kind of a special value. 17 DLP4. Digital light projector DLP four six point three C three. Okay, C. I'm gonna do six point three volts. We'll turn that down. And we want adapter three. Let's see, maybe I should plug it in here. This is about what I would expect out of this by looking at it. Let's see what we can do here. Get the old uh, telephono out. And let's see if we go to clock, and then we go to stopwatch, and then we hit start. So let's come back to this uh, in a little while. It's kind of interesting, it appears that these by the amount of dust on here, these tubes were removed when the set was retired. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. The dust just smeared and went all down in the pins. Crap. Coming up, but it's not... Obviously, the set was retired because the CRT was dead. Value of compressed 134A duster gas giving me testicle cancer exceeds value of television. Yeah, well, I'm uh, a little bit surprised. I'm not, I'm only on 6.3 volts. Uh, I'm not up above it. But you're not going to get any cutoff on this. Not at all. Which means it's going to have a crappy picture. But I'll let it keep baking. And the airplane says, like I say, I haven't rejuvenated or done anything with it, so we're going to give this a shot. We'll get a picture on it. It's not going to, it's not going to be anything but a cloudy mess, but hey, we'll be able to dial in on some propaganda. Maybe we'll be able to get channel six analog before they cut it off. So I need to try and find a 6FQ7, 6CG7, 6AX4, which is a damper, and 6DQ6, 6BQ6. Any of those will work. I have acquired the necessary vacuum-filled transistor bulbs to populate. Safety first, with extra airplanes. I'm going to just do a dim bulb here. Um, just... It's not that dim, is it? I 
what is this? 68 watts. 130. It is getting dimmer, isn't it? Maybe what I should do is I should parallel my meter with this so we can watch the voltage. I wonder. So is this. Yeah, that does turn it off. Okay. Absolutely nothing but the safest, finest testing equipment. Like some third world. Okay, let's see. So. What's his name should send me? You know, I get all these Chinese companies that want to send me all this stuff to uh, review. You know, what's his name should send me one of those meters he makes with his name on it. And I would use it in this uh, repairing this stuff. And you should say, well, why don't you just go out and buy your own? Well, you know, I have plenty of meters. It would just be nice to to uh, support another YouTube channel, a fellow YouTube channel, by displaying his meter for sale. Because then maybe other people would buy it, and the proceeds would not be going to China. 48.8 volts. I should say, all the proceeds would not be going to China. So look at this old cheesy paper filter capacitor in here. Here's another one. Just the cheapest stuff that GE could possibly source they used in these. So let's go up. Let's see, what is this one? I don't know. It's a three way. Okay, well, that's interesting because it seems like that one's 60 volts, and it seems like the light, as, the, as something here starts conducting, the light gets brighter, like too much so. I'm going to pull this out. I think it's here uh, looking for Glenn Waters. Curtis Mathis, anybody? Anyway, back to what I was doing was pulling this out. So look at that. When I pull that out, the um, voltage goes to 90. Damn bird really wants some attention. Come on, say it again. Say it again. Let me get my twisted T out.
And you see as the tube starts conducting, see how much brighter it gets? So I wonder how much current the filament uses. Does the filament use like 20 watts? Okay, I went back down to the smaller bulb. We have, uh, say, 50 volts there. This is a solid state version of that that I made. With that removed, we have 68 volts. Don't try this at home, kids. Here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, there is a hell of a draw there. Um, on the B, B, B boost, the B voltage, B plus. Not the B boost coming out of the flyback, but the actual B plus. That's a hell of a lot of draw because at 37 volts, there's nowhere near enough voltage on the filaments for the tube to start conducting. And we got the two biggest tubes removed, so it's like a shorted filter or something. I'm going to let this sit for a while. Um, and see what happens. It's coming up slowly. It would be nice to reform rather than replace only because of what it is. It's coming up. Here we go. Kind of shaky today. There we go. Give it 10 minutes. It's at 47 volts now. 22 minutes. We're up to 55 volts. I'm going to go up to the next size light bulb. I'll let it sit for five minutes and I'm going to take the thermal uh, infrared camera and we'll see where the hot spots are in here. Okay, with this light bulb, this is a bigger one, uh, where it's about 70 volts. And that still seems, I don't know, there's quite a few filaments in here. We have two things competing for electricity in here. We have, or for current, electrons. We have the tube filaments and we have the B+. Plus. So we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven transistor saturated vacuum bulbs competing for electrons but this thing the majority of it seemed to be going through there maybe not so much now because if I pull that out I only go up to 90 volts if I put it in I go down to 70 volts well we'll still take the thermal camera to it and have a look Well, the vertical output tube is definitely hot. The horizontal oscillator tube is definitely hot. I don't see anything with that capacitor, and that capacitor there looks cool. Ooh, there's something back here that's hot. That is a resistor right there. Uh, that looks like a tube socket. That looks like the audio output tube is hot and the one on the bottom
So we're pulling a lot of current through that tube there, and we're pulling a lot of current through that tube there. And let's see. That resistor is pretty toasty. Yeah, so I don't see anything here that looks like hot filters. All right, so our heat right now is around the six CU5 audio output and the 6CX8 video output and the 6DN7 vertical output and the horizontal multi vibrator. So it's pretty toasty. Just warm. Just warm. It's hot. Okay, so I don't see anything here. It's warm. I don't see anything here that's smoking. I've gone up to the 150. I've got 101 volts across the line and climbing. That should be a pretty hot B plus with that solid state rectifier. You don't want to put one of these in here really because your your B plus will go up like 40 volts. I think maybe we can populate the uh, vacuum bulbs and we'll put a meter on there, a current meter. Actually, you know what, uh, this might have the thing where it uses the B-boost off the flyback for the detector tube, so we might not get static or tumor, tuner performance until we get high voltage. Okay, you know what, hell with it. This one says weak on it. See what happens. When that starts conducting, it should really start drawing some current through there. Voltage on the line is 100. Again, don't try this at home, kids. I have zero fear of electricity, which is probably not a good thing for... Well, when I connected that, we went to 90 volts here. So, it looks like the oscillator is running. Let me see if I can prove that. Where is my horizontal hold? Okay, this is horizontal hold. Let me turn this. And I, I can hear it. So it looks like our oscillator is running. Uh, I think I'm going to go full power on it. But I think 120 milliamps is about the max you want to go on this tube also. 
I don't think you want to go any hotter than that. Okay, it looks like I have no high voltage here at all. But I do have 120 milliamps on the plate of the tube. And the horizontal oscillator is running. So, uh, let me see if I can draw an arc off the tip of that. I'm being fairly careful here. I'm... Nothing. Um, so again, I am current limiting with this. Uh, this is better than a Variac because it's actually actively riding the amount of current flowing into the set. And right now I have 89 volts across the line cord and I have 120 milliamps plate current on the horizontal output. Like I said, I think the horizontal output is supposed to have around 90 for a 6DQ6. I could be wrong with that. Or is it a 6DQ5? I always get them mixed up. It's a 6DQ6. And the horizontal oscillator is running because I, I can turn the frequency and hear it. Hear that? I wonder what this is right here. Okay, this is width. That doesn't appear to be like that doesn't appear to be legitimate static. That's something else going on. So we're gonna ignore that because that's not legitimate. Wait, what's happening here? Okay, something's wigging out here. Maybe the capacitors are reforming, I don't know, here it comes. Okay, our line voltage is 90. Um, our high voltage is a hundred is uh, six thousand. Now our static's gone again, and the cathode current is plate currents coming down. I don't know what happened there. Why it just started going? Uh. Maybe I'll juice it here for a moment and see what happens. Professionalism. Okay, I'm going to juice it. Okay, that's got it juiced. Uh, we're only at 10 kilovolts. I think the book said this thing takes, this CRT takes. 20 19 and believe it or not we actually got some
something here. Yeah, that's got the high voltage cranking, but it's also got the plate current way high. That capacitor back there might be the boost filter and it might be reforming. That's why what's happening with the high voltage we see happening. Uh, the high voltage continues to come up. The cathode current continues to drop on a reduced voltage. So I have a feeling that capacitor back there, that electrolytic, and I haven't pulled a schematic on this yet. I guess I could do that. So of course the damper and the horizontal output are hot. All right. Vertical output is hot. The flyback is getting warm. Ooh, that capacitor back there looks like it's getting warm. Maybe that's what's reforming. Still no activity from the tuner. I'm going back to the current hog here and I'll jump this out and we'll see what we get. Because with this, your B plus is going to be much closer and look at the difference. Instead of 170, it's uh, only 120. So yeah, you, you can't just go and sub this out on a uh, TV like this. You can do it for testing purposes. You can use these, you could do these with radios, but you have to add a drop, a, if I could only learn to talk. You can do these with radios, but you have to add a dropping resistor. Well, a TV uses too much power to add a dropping resistor, you'd end up with a 50 or 100 watt dropping resistor dumping loads of heat. You really need to take some windings off the transformer. So 15 kilovolts, uh, 100, 110 milliamps, that might be a tad on the high side. And we do have, it's actually fairly bright. But there's no activity from the tuner. None whatsoever. The first thing you always do with an old tube thing is when you get something like this where it's not working, you move the tubes around for a bad connection. Now this seems suspect to me, I don't know why. Something you always see me do is more often than not you get a crusty tube socket and it's just it's just no activity here this is first IF so it comes out of the tuner through this coax line here. First IF, second IF, 
third IF. And it's weird, there doesn't seem to be any activity there at all. Looks like you can open this up. This shield will come off of here. Yeah, we do have a, a raster here. See if I can adjust that. But no activity from the tuner at all. So there's horizontal deflection, there's vertical deflection. I don't hear any 60 cycle hum from the speaker, just the vertical noise. The high voltage, according to the picture, the book that comes with the picture tube tester is a little low. Okay, so to go any further with this, we're gonna do a part two. Um, at least the sweep is kind of resurrected and we might be able to get away with not changing the filters. We have a front end problem. We have no activity through the IF uh, section or the tuner. It really seems like it's more maybe in the IF because should be if I move these tubes around we should get a little I would think we'd get a little scratchy scratchy from from something and we're not so um, next step is to get the schematic I'll grab the Sam's book real quick and I'll look up what an M5 is M5 465-1 hope I have that uh, and it has a dot and a hashtag symbol. Dot denotes black and white TV. Hashtag denotes Sam's publication out of print. Okay. Four sixty five dash one. 